Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. After reading one of your blog posts, Neil, I realized that intro is like the halo effect that you talk about in one of your blog posts. Um, this is part of the Skubana e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Skubana is a software platform to manage your entire e-commerce operation. Today, we have Neil Patel. He's co-founder of Hello Bar, Kismetrics, and Crazy Egg that helped over 50,000 companies grow their business. He helped companies like Amazon, NBC, and Viacom grow their revenue. He runs a popular site, Quick Sprout, and the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, and Entrepreneur Magazine call him a top influencer on the web. Neil, thanks for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. It's been two years. Um, in two years, the real question is, what made you decide to shave your head? Last time you had hair and a mustache. That's right. Uh, mustache probably probably meant that I didn't shave in a while. Okay. Because I would have scruff. Sometimes it looks like I have a mustache, but I typically shave at least once or twice a week. Uh, as for the head, I was going bald. And I so am le- I. So I have to decide, when do I shave my head? <laughs> hey, you still look good. Uh, for me, it was more so that I was going bald and I used to part my hair. So when I was parting my hair, it didn't work out because the parts in the front, <laughs> there's no hair there. So it's just like parting the middle and then the rest. And I was like, ah, forget this. Yeah, thing. yeah. I want you to incorporate a blog post on how content marketing and you shaving your head or something like that. But um, so, Neil, I was watching an interview with you at an e commerce event in Romania. So, what were you doing in Romania and what did you learn there? Sure. Uh, it was at a conference there, was teaching the Romanian audience how to uh, grow their businesses through content marketing and just general marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I speak all around the world and yeah. it's fun to get us meet different people in different countries. You get to understand different cultures and that allows me to figure out how I should also be marketing my businesses internationally because 51% of our revenue comes from international audiences. Really? Really? So I like traveling to make sure that I know how different cultures are. Yeah. So what did you find resonated with your message with that international audience when you were talking to people and mingling? Yeah, they got it all. Uh, The one thing that I really found that they could really understand was with forms of marketing, especially internationally, they're not as up to date on, let's say, content marketing or social media marketing or CRO, a lot of the tactics we use here in the U.S., especially mm-hmm. like e-commerce businesses, right? They're mm-hmm. probably all over the world. Right. So what they try to do is they try to find quick hacks instead of thinking long term, like, oh, our audience isn't used to this, so what can we get away with really quickly mm-hmm. to provide us an ROI versus, hey, what should we do that's best for them and thinking more long term? They're yeah. getting there. They're just not there fully yet. Yeah. So what do you recommend? Obviously, you take a long term approach. Yeah, you always have to take the long-term approach because consumers are savvy. I don't care where you are in the world. Eventually, they'll catch up. Mm -hmm. You should always do what's best for them. I believe in the Warren Buffett philosophy. Do what's best for your brand, even if it doesn't make you as much. Yeah. So what are the most common questions you get with e-commerce founders? The common question I end up getting with e-commerce founders is, hey, how do I end up generating more traffic when I can't do things like content marketing or social media marketing? Because it's not sexy with our e-commerce business. Mm-hmm. That's not always true. You can do some of those things. But where e-commerce uh, companies tend to lack is they don't focus enough on link building. You can still do a ton of manual outreach, which works. Mm-hmm. They don't do a lot of broken link building. That, again, still works. They don't focus on optimizing their conversions. They focus on more traffic instead of optimizing conversions. Mm -hmm. Because once you do the conversion part, you can now open yourself up to paying way more for paid ads. Mm -hmm. Right? It's you paid advertising always goes up over time. So if your conversion rates stay the same, it's not economical. But if you can increase your conversion rate to double, let's say, you can spend in theory double on paid ads. Yeah. Yeah, and about the conversion rate, I want to talk about traffic for a second. But before I do, you you know, I reached out to a couple of e-commerce professionals and want to know what do you want to know from Neil? What what's uh, top of mind? So they gave me a few questions. One was, um, what recommendations or tools would you use to lower the cart abandonment rate for an e-commerce website? I would do a two-step checkout because uh, there's a company called Rejoiner. They do some of this as well, but I also do two-step checkouts. Mm-hmm. In which use GPS for name, email first, and then check out on the next page. You'll get more conversions. Also, look 
tool called Rejoiner, which usually helps conversion rates for abandonment for e-commerce companies. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Neil. And uh, I figured you'd have some good solutions for that. Um, and then, you know, obviously Q4 is here. And so another big question uh, when I reached out is if you had a piece of advice to tell an online seller in regards to taking full advantage of Q4 and, you know, the potential profit increase for their business, what would it be? What, what advice do you have? Focus on conversions. You're going to get a ton of buyers. Focus on conversions. Because if you can increase it, it'll allow you to do things like uh, spend more on ads and capture more of the Q4 audience. Or maybe you may be able to even like uh, do things like free shipping. Free shipping, mm -hmm. even if you don't make as much, it's the number one conversion driver that we've seen for e-commerce companies. Mm -hmm. What's number two, three, four, a hundred? <laughs> what? Uh, then it gets into product images that we see that have a big impact. Mm -hmm. uh, reviews have a huge impact, assuming they're legitimate, not like your friends going and leaving a ton of reviews, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the ability to sort by the reviews, good, bad, right? Like, what are people talking about? Uh, the ones people find most valuable. We also find options. Well, giving too many options in the e-commerce world really hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, upsells and downsells on the checkout process, we found that to actually help uh, improve your average order value. Mm -hmm. So what are the biggest mistakes people are making when you go and obviously you get called in to consult with a lot of businesses too. What, what are the mistakes do you see right off the bat that people are making? They just copy other players and they usually copy the larger players like Amazon. Mm -hmm. What works for Amazon will not work for you. Amazon has very strong brand loyalty. Mm -hmm. Amazon's been around for years. They don't have the issues of people not trusting them or credit card fraud or something's going to get stolen. They're in a whole different ballpark. So mm -hmm. don't try to copy them. You got to look at people in your space, what they're doing. You got to survey your audience, find out what they like, don't like, and make changes from there. But don't just copy someone else mm. just because they're successful or even in the same space. What works for your competition may not work for you. Mm. That's a really good point because, you know, you want to do what works. What do you see people copying that at first glance that would seem like it would work but doesn't when you copy from Amazon? Like, oh, Amazon uses like these orange checkout buttons. It mm. must work. Well, if the, all the colors on your design are orange and you had orange checkout buttons, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really depends on your website and how it looks. Mm, that's a good point. And so, you know, one of the things people commented on from that interview in, in the Romania interview is you talked about the traffic and conversion and you were talking about focus on traffic first. And one of the questions people were, talk, were asking below is how do you acquire massive traffic if you are just starting out? What do you? What recommendations do you have uh, for that? No matter what kind of site you are, e-commerce, services-oriented business, you can always have a blog. For example, if your e-commerce company sells cables for TVs, right? You mm -hmm. can talk about how to improve your TV's picture quality without upgrading your TV. You can create a lot of interesting articles that could benefit potential buyers. It doesn't even matter if you're pitching your own products or services. You're just writing content that's useful for people interested in products or services in your space, right? It yeah. doesn't matter if they buy from you. Yeah. When you write articles like that, naturally you'll link out to other people. When you link out to other people, you can email every single one of those people and say, hey, John, I just want to let you know you have amazing content. It's so amazing that I even linked out to you from my last post. I like that, yeah. Let me know what you think. Uh, cheers, Neil. And then I would add a PS at then. PS, if you share, if you like my content, feel free to share it. It wouldn't just make my day; it would make my decade. <laughs> right? I know it's kind of corny. I like it. Yeah. So things like that help you get more traffic. Another thing you can do is you go to Twitter, you look at all the people who have tweeted similar content because there's a search feature on there, and then a lot of those people have bios. In their bios, they link to their website. You could end up going to their website, getting their email address, emailing them, saying, hey, John, I noticed that you tweeted this article and then put like the author's name or by X, Y, and Z author last week. Um, I actually have a similar piece of content coming out or much more detailed piece. It's like a guide or epic piece of content in this space. I think you'll love it. Let me know if you want me to, if you want to see it before it comes out. Mm. And when you release it, you send it to him an email. You'd be like, here you go, John. Enjoy. Right, and a lot of those people will tweet it out or share it. Yeah, love that, Neil. Um, and so, 
where are you now? I know you're traveling. I know we talked that you're in a hotel somewhere. What are you up to uh, today, this week? I'm in LA for meetings. T- shitty internet, which sucks. <laughs> you do. And uh, yeah, I end up going back to Vegas on Friday, which is where I live. And I also spend a lot of time in Seattle too. Yeah. What's yeah. top of mind for you for Quick Sprout of what you want to do or grow? Because one of the questions I got was, you know, Neil is the, the content marketing expert. We want to know where the puck is going for content. It's There's nothing changing other than more advanced content. Mm-hmm. And people are making mistakes right now. They think that the more detailed content you write, the better off you are. It's no, it's the more advanced content you write, the more sulfur shares you'll typically get because it's been around for a long time. Hmm. And the simple posts, assuming your headlines are simple, like if I write a post called What is Content Marketing? Yeah. I'm much more likely, or What is e commerce? I'm way more likely to rank for the term e commerce than if I wrote an advanced guide to e commerce. Really? Advanced guide to e commerce. Yeah, because the click through rate is so high on those basic terms like mm. What is X? Yeah, love that. And um, so, for Neil, for you, you know, I know you. I mentioned at the top of the interview uh, about Amazon, NBC, Viacom. What things do you tell Amazon? Uh, so I, I teach them about CRL. Okay. So I've consulted with different divisions. They have so many products and services. Like I'll help them with CRL. I can't get into what I help them with. <laughs> well, the only thing I help them with specifically is just pure CRL. So for that, for the conversion optimization. Um, what should people do that you, know, you said obviously don't copy Amazon what should they be doing that Amazon is doing don't ever think about what should you be doing that other people are it's more so well actually I'll give you one mm-hmm. Amazon doesn't just make changes they do a lot of surveying mm-hmm. so they look at their analytics see where there's the holes so that's one part and quantitative data only gives you half the piece of the puzzle the other part is qualitative so they also do a lot of surveying mm-hmm both of those, they get feedback. The feedback helps them determine what they should or shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. A change was... test perspective. Because then you'll create tests that have a much more likelihood of winning versus just creating a ton of tests that fail. Yeah. 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 So there are certain tools or software that people should be thinking about using for, for that, for surveying or, or reaching out that you like? Yeah, you can use like SurveyMonkey or Qualaroo. Those two tools work out well. Yeah. Um, and... You know, one of the other things was, you know, we talked about some of the big mistakes. What are some challenges that maybe e-commerce, uh, they may be facing down the road that you see because you've worked with these big companies? Um, what are some challenges people should look out for in the future? Yeah, the challenges are ad costs are going to go up. It's going to become more competitive. you got to figure out a way to figure out, get free shipping, keep your expenses low. And provide more to users so then that way you don't have to spend our arm and leg on advertising. See, some people say, all right, we're going to spend time on advertising, just increase our prices. Mm-hmm. You should try to do what's best for the user. Because what will happen is those word of mouth will kick in and they'll keep coming back. Yeah. So, Neil, you know, you produce so much content. Like, you know, just going through like the, the one that was uh, posted today, you know, learn from the best 12 lessons from five content marketing case studies. What does your schedule look like? How do you, um, I guess, your your content creation schedule? Well, I spend around two to three hours a day, sometimes four or five, blogging, seven days a week. Yeah, yeah. So how do you decide what's next, what you're going to, what I topic? I get so many emails and people ask me questions. I just pick one and I write a post. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and one of the, the other remarkable things is, you know, it's not just the content, but it's the engagement. You know, you'll have like a hundred comments um, or two hundred comments. So, talk to people about not just creating the content, but um, about how to increase the engagement, like you do. Right in a very passive tone. So, I'm not passive. A conversational tone. Use the words you or I. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey John, how are you doing today? Probably not so well, right? Why? Because you're reading this article. <laughs> It's talking about why your e-commerce sales drop by 50% and what you should be doing next. Well, yeah. don't worry. I actually have a few solutions for you that will help you grow your e-commerce business. Like conversational tone. I know it's not smooth, but I just came out of it or came up with that right now, right? <laughs> so right. It works. What happens is when it's conversational, people don't think it's a, of it as a lecture. Mm-hmm. And you're much more likely to create a conversation through comments, engagement, interaction. Make sure you respond to each of the comments. All those types of things help increase engagement. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, what, uh, what are you excited about lately that you're working on with Quick, uh, Quick Sprout or other projects? Crazy Eggs getting into the A-B testing market. Excited about that. Hello Bar is growing. Those are the main products I'm working on. Yeah. What's going on with Hello Bar that people should know about? It's a free tool that helps you collect more emails and conversions and you can do offers for your e-commerce business like you know, free shipping and you can post messages. It just helps you improve your conversions. Sooner or later, I would say within three months, we're going to release marketing automation for e-commerce businesses mm -hmm. for simple and it'll be free. And we'll even give away all the templates that you should be using to maximize sales from like coupon templates to getting people to come back and buy more, etc. There's so many pages, Neil, on obviously e-commerce sites. And you mentioned a few really great tips on conversion, like the free shipping and images. What pages should people look at on their site as far as optimizing? Uh Product pages. You're going to usually yield the highest ROI with product pages or checkout pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone, e commerce business, when I first meet people, they're like, let's test out our homepage. I'm like, you can test out your homepage. But if you look at your traffic, majority of it's coming from long tail terms going to product pages. Unless you're a really big e commerce company, you're not going to get a ton of traffic to your homepage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you were starting, let's say, like a yoga product business today, what would you do? What would you start with and what would be your main focus now and then for future for increasing sales? I would create a blog on yoga products, create a ton of content, go find a lot of Instagram and Facebook influencers who are into yoga, pay them to post content to uh, beef up the traffic and the branding. Then from there I would start selling products once I have a big email list. Yeah. And so I know you always have a goal in mind with Quick Sprout, what's the, the latest goal that you're you're striving towards? Product release. There's a content marketing product that we're going to release to the market. I would say within three to six months, mm -hmm. it should help people boost their traffic on their blog. And uh, something you can't mention now until it comes out. I'm assuming. That's right. Okay. You end up on the homepage of Quick Sprout. Um, what other software? should people be using to run their e-commerce store? Or well, other software? well, if you're trying to run your e-commerce store, start with something simple, Magento, Shopify. Make sure you're, it's optimized. You have the SEO plugins if you're using like Magento. Make sure you're collecting emails. There's like Hello Bar, Exit Intent, Bounce Exchange, etc., which can help you collect more emails. Hello Bar is great if you're a small e-commerce company. If you're big and do hundreds of millions of dollars, something like Bounce Exchange is great as well because they do all the work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, since it's um, the Skewbound e-commerce mastery series, I always ask, um, you know, what's been a kind of a low moment business wise and what's been a proud moment business wise? Low moment was when I was a kid, I lost over a million dollars in a hosting company, cloud hosting. It wasn't popular at the time or really out and now it's called cloud hosting. A bad team for execution which sucked because it was borrowed money, so I had to pay it all back too. That is a low moment. Yeah, I could see that being a low moment. And I was a kid, so I didn't, right? It was devastating. Uh, happy moment is just helping out businesses and getting emails every day saying, wow, your content's amazing. Thank you for the information. It's really helped change X, Y, and Z for me. Like That makes me happy. Yeah. What's been one that sticks out for you of someone taking your content and really taking action and getting to the next level in their business? I would say... Or maybe it's a consulting client that you got it, a lot of results yeah, with. It's actually small mom and pops. Getting the emails of people yeah, saying, yeah. like, I had a mom, and she was a single mom, had a bed and breakfast somewhere in the boonies in the yeah. U.S., right? I don't know where. Right. And she didn't know how to make money. She's like, my son has to work at Home Depot to help pay the bills. And I gave her a few tweaks to her website, like how to not make people go through 10 pages before they can book a reservation. Simple things maybe to you and I. Yeah. And her business changed. She only had, I think, 10 or 11 rooms, and now she's almost always fully occupied. She's like, this is amazing. amazing. My son now helps me. He doesn't have to work. He can now go to college, and I can support him. I was like, good for you. That's great. I love that. You know, and, you know that's a good point, Neil. You know, it's simple, but it's something that even advanced people probably may skip over or not do as far as fundamentals go. What are some also those simple changes that may seem obvious but are a must for people to, to look at? Well, instead of telling you the simple changes, I'm going to teach you how to actually find them on your own. Go ahead, yeah. 
you're going on your own website, put yourself in the user's shoes. Or if you can't do that, go find a company like, uh, what is that? Uh, user, no, not user flow. Like uh, buy something? I think there was a... Uh, no. All they do is like you pay for recordings. And oh, mouse flow? Mouse flow maybe? Or no? Not mouse no. flow. It's actual company that gets you, user testing. Dot com. Okay. User testing will go get random people in your niche and have them use your website and it'll show you all the bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. So just have some friends go to onto your website or you go onto your website and just look at it and see like what's hard or what's confusing or what doesn't make sense if I was a potential customer. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it, go find someone who could be a potential customer and have them go through your site and tell them what ask them what they would like change. Or ask them what's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Neil, um, I appreciate your time. I know you're like in between conferences, hotels, interviews. So thank you so much. Um, you know, last question. What's a typical day? Like what's uh, for Neil Patel? What, what's yesterday look like? What do you do? Yesterday I traveled, airplane. Uh, like a non-travel day, let's say. Wake up early in the morning, emails. I even do emails and while I'm brushing. <laughs> I'm like brushing with Seriously? one hand with the other. Uh, I still haven't ate breakfast. It's 1039. I've been working too much. Uh, Vegas is a bit better. If I'm not traveling, I'm home. Someone's there to help me with like food and packing and whatever daily tasks need to get done. But yeah, I just work, emails, meetings, blogging, phone calls. That's really it. It's blogging, phone calls, meetings, emails. That's all I do. So what time you wake up? What time you usually go to bed? Today I was up around 6.30. I don't ever need an alarm. Naturally, I wake up between 6 and 6.30. And I usually sleep around 11 o'clock and I'm usually working till I sleep. Mm -hmm. And so any fun, you do anything for fun? It seems like you're working all day. Work, uh, network with entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. for That's really it. Almost all my friends are entrepreneurs as well. Yeah. Any interesting events that you're speaking at or going to uh, the rest of the year or next year? Uh, there's one in Lithuania. I forgot the name, but uh, I should know it. I just wasn't able to pronounce it. But yeah, it's, I go to a ton of events. I don't always know which ones are great until I'm there. And you know, I usually have the most fun and learn the most when I'm going to international events. Because mm -hmm. so you get to see how a lot of the other world works, right? Parts of the world. The U.S. is the same. The U.S. is actually different if you're going from like Texas to San Francisco. Outside of San Francisco, New York, L.A., the rest of the U.S. is very similar. But those little hot spots, it's a bit biased. And when you go overseas... It's like a culture shock, right? You get yeah. to really see how your customers overseas are, their size, what their problems are, etc. Yeah. So, what does change your perspective? Obviously, going it widens your perspective when you go to these international conferences and overseas. What have you brought back in your business here that you wouldn't have known if you hadn't done that? They all tell me. A lot of them say they won't spend money on U.S. products unless the currency for the products is in their. Uh, is, is not in USD. They want it in mm. their local currency. So mm. things like that, little tweaks, really impact sales for international business. Mm -hmm. um, so what, I know you've been to a lot of conferences, um, seminars. What should people think about for, is a must for, if you're in the e-commerce world, what should they attend? Yeah, uh, if you're in the e-commerce world, what you should attend is not one specific conference or anything like that. And you can go to conferences, but actually what I recommend doing yeah. is instead of attending a specific conference, start Googling for problems in your e-commerce business. Spend that time and money trying to learn because most information is out there for free. Mm -hmm. Go and try to hire someone with the extra money. Not me, but you can go hire like a consultant or like an engineer for really cheap on like Odesk or Elance and get them to make those changes to your website and see what happens. Yeah. So, you know, so far, great um, actionable tips. What should we leave people with as far uh, as starting to do right now for their, their business? Yeah, if you're trying to do something for your business, go start with user testing or go find someone that can go through your website and help give you feedback on what you should change or what doesn't make sense. That's where you should start off. Yeah. Yeah. Neil, thank you. Go back to your uh, hundreds of emails that are now piled up in the past half hour, and uh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you.